Hello boys and girls, my name's Tom and this is the Safe House Podcast. I am joined as per by my good friend and co-host James Pickard. Yo. How's tricks? I'm alright, I'm a little tired, but I'm alright. Yeah, I know the feeling. It's mm. been, a, been a long, old week. Mm. Um, you've been at EGX, that's probably why you're tired. Yeah, Birmingham. What's going on up in Birmingham? Video games have been happening. <laughs> video games happened in Birmingham. All the video games happened. Awesome. Uh, yeah, what's, what's, the, what's the crack then? Um... Yeah, I suppose it's all right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the thing is, most of the the big AAA, big budget, super mega games, Yeah. most of the ones they had there are either already out, right. out soon, mm. or not out for ages. So far away yeah. that you're not going to remember it. The not yeah. out for ages stuff is pretty cool. They had like Mirror's Edge. Yeah. So you to play Mirror's Edge Catalyst. Nice. Which uh, is very much... A sequel to Mirror's Edge. Yeah, is it notably better than the first one? I don't know because all I got to do was like a the brief prologue right. story bit, which was a tutorial basically. Right. Uh, and then they let you loose in a bit of the open world. Okay. To do a couple of challenges, so you had a time trial mm-hmm. and a billboard hack, which was kind of like a, a Far Cry three um, tower thing. Yeah. You, it was kind of a mini puzzle. You had to work out how to reach this billboard. Okay. And hack it to display your tag. Oh, you're such a rebel. You're so rebellious. And then there was a bit of combat because Mirror's Edge needs combat for some reason. Yeah. Although thankfully it looks like they've got rid of guns. Yeah. From I think it's supposed to be all character. like um, punchy punches isn't mm. it? So. Which but is that good. kind of devolved into me hammering X a bit so I don't really know. That's, but that's uh, how games work. Yeah. Mirror's Edge it seems okay. Cool. I'm kind of glad it's happening because I didn't mind the first one, but mm. Jesus Christ, the ending. <laughs> so bad. Yeah, that's good. Um, well, it's Battlefront, yeah. It just looks really good. It does. I'm, I, I'm on it. I want it. I want to get on the open beta. I didn't want to queue three and a half hours to play at the show. Yeah, fuck that noise. That can you might as well just wait off. the three weeks and then yeah. play it at home all day. So. Yeah, and that is probably what I'll do. Good, because um, I, I remember reading something recently about Battlefront where they were saying, like, if you are, in theory, good enough, you can, you know, you'll be playing as, like, Vader for the entire match or playing as Luke for the entire match. They said the problem is the moment you do well enough to get to, like, respawn in as Luke or Vader, you get a massive target painted on you and the entire team are just going to all go at you at once. Yeah. So, but at the same time... I really want to play as Vader. It would be so much fun. <laughs> it would be pretty good. Just force choke the shit out of everyone. Nice. That's what you get. But yeah, what's, uh, what else um, what's going on there? Try, I've already run out of the, the big game. Oh yeah, they had um, games. Tom Clancy's fun fun times. Yeah. Rainbow Six. Rainbow Six Siege. The, the Counter Strike reskin. And with um, more abilities and stuff. I don't yeah. know. It's Counter Strike. Um, Division was there, wasn't Division, it? Division, yeah. How's that looking? Because I, they, I'm just after, getting less and less excited about after it. After E3, I thought they fucked it. Yeah. Um, because they revealed that it was the MMO style, but mm. at any point you could turn on your allies and just murder them yeah, for your loot. Yeah. Like, well, well, why? that's that's just gonna be shit. Yeah. Because people are just gonna be. Because people are just gonna do that the whole time. You're not gonna be able to enjoy it. It's yeah. gonna be like GTA Five Online again. <laughs> I mean, you do a mission. And your mm. teammate then kills you for the money, yeah, and then says, "Why aren't you here to do the next mission with me?" Yeah, it's like because fuck <laughs> you, Just why? The shit out of me. Uh, yeah, I'm not so hopeful for the division. Yeah, but there was Just Cause three, blow up everything. The game. I really liked Just Cause. The both of them. I Just thought, Cause two is brilliant. Thought they were okay. I I thoroughly enjoyed Just Cause two. Mm. But then I also thoroughly enjoy the Saints Row games, and it's a very similar sort of thing. Mm. So it's just sort of a sandbox of go around and have fun. Yeah. Especially on two, where you can just tether shit together. <laughs> the amount of fun I used to have, where I'd break into like an enemy airbase, get on one of their fighter jets, as it like stand on the wing, and then I would tether like a guard to the wing, and then jump off the plane, and the plane would take off, and the guards like, Whoa. <laughs> great fun. Nice. Yeah, you can do all sorts of that stuff now as well. Mm. Like hanging from the underside of a helicopter while wielding a rocket launcher. Because, of course... Realism. Yeah. That's what we want. Um, and it's got the 
a Metal Gear Solid Five style, you can call in stuff to be yeah, airdropped at support. any point. Yeah. So there was a bit where the guy called in a Humvee and a whole like Matrix style wall of weapons, <laughs> nice. and he just went on a rampage. Uh, you could do that in two because I remember ordering mm. cars and they were just like they'd drop off like massive boxes and the boxes <laughs> would fall apart and there was a car in it nice yeah oh, um, this is a great game yeah that's going to be ridiculous yeah they also had Homefront the Revolution yeah you were saying it's like a basically a reboot of a, it, the game it's a sequel to yeah like what they so I was talking to them about it and I was saying oh now the, it's moved from because I think that the previous game was set somewhere on the west coast of America because right. it's it's Koreans, North Korea invades America and somehow takes over. <laughs> and somehow manages that like, despite having like a, a fraction of the population. Yeah. It's basically Red Dawn. Yeah, and I was going to say, it is just Red Dawn the, the first, game. The first game was written by the writer of Red Dawn, John oh, Minius. Well, that makes sense. So he came in and wrote the game. Yeah. But everyone thought it was a bit garbage, really. Yeah, um, I haven't heard great things. People threw a load of money at it, and it wasn't very good. Mm. Um, but somehow the the sequel was being made, but it's not a sequel. No. I was talking to them, they said, "No, this isn't a sequel. It's a reimagining, a reimagining of the I same hate, idea." I hate when people do that. <laughs> and and they've reimagined it by making Assassin's Creed the shooter. Uh... Because you've got like an open world. And missions happen in the world, mm. and then you go to specific points, which you then take over yeah. to convert to your side. And that seems to be most of the game. Excellent. With guns. Good. Fantastic. And it's just, uh, it's just I played it. It's just boring. Yeah. It's just like and the shooting didn't even feel good, and you could switch up parts of your gun on the fly so you could have a shotgun that fires molotovs and stuff which you know okay <laughs> hold on, hold on. that's probably fun but i'm pretty sure that's <laughs> not a thing that happens well like explosive rounds or something all right okay um but yeah just stuff a bottle in the end of the shotgun hope for the best <laughs> awesome. yeah but you were playing a lot of vr stuff you've been getting yes. on the vr hype vr so good yeah I've so good still never the, the only time I've ever done VR is when I was a kid and I was at the science museum and it was like uh, bearing in mind I was about seven <laughs> and so I put on a little headset which oh god that was 20 years ago <laughs> <laughs> and you put on a little headset and I, I was in a train mm. in like the cab of a train and I could not for the life of me work out why I couldn't open the door I kept reaching for the door and they were like you can't Tom you can't open the door <laughs> I'm like, no, I can see the door handle though. And they're like, no, but you're not, you can't open it. You're just looking at it. I'm like, but I want to open the door. No. No. Definitely come a long way then. Yeah. Because you were playing Elite Dangerous, which got right on my tits that game. Yeah. But you play it in VR and like, wow. It's probably really fun in VR. It's probably really fun if you have any idea what you're doing. They had the force out with the the stick and the. Yeah, the flight stick. Flight stick and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, Keyboard and mouse is not the way to play that game. Yeah. And so you you kind of just flying around, and it's the it's the weird moment when you play and watch stuff, and you just have the screen in front of you. Yeah. And at any point, you can just turn off, turn to the side, and you're not looking at the screen anymore. Yeah. And then you get in VR, and you go, and you hear someone talking. You turn to look at the person talking. Yeah. And there's more of the ship you're in. And you turn around, and there's more of the ship you're in. And you kind of go, oh, oh no, it's VR. Oh. That's weird. <laughs> it is super weird feeling, but amazing as well and then yeah. you kind of look down and you see like a bit of a chest yeah and there's these two arms out on the sticks and you push the throttle forward and the guy's arm goes forward in the screen and you just kind of what it sounds so cool it's so cool. it would make me want to play elite dangerous again mm. it was so cool and then they had different uh because that was on the htc vive the valve one right um and they had different like a tech demo bit as well mm. um where there was an art mini game not really mini game but right. art studio I guess yeah and so you had the, the two these two controllers in your hand yeah um, which acted like paintbrushes and stuff right. so there was this guy drawing stuff in the middle of the the screen yeah and um, like you could just write his name and then you can walk through your creation and look at it that's weird uh, and there was a, a game I can't remember the name of it now. But you had to build contraptions. I think it was like Insane Contraption or something. Right. 
And so you were kind of reaching around, picking up stuff, yeah. building this contraption to get a, a <laughs> like gem to the other VR side of the room. VR Meccano. Yeah. Awesome. It was weird. And then that was just the Vive. Yeah. It was PlayStation VR as well. Yeah. Which is Sony's Definitely not the Morpheus. Attempt. It's not called Morpheus anymore. It's not the Morpheus. Um, now I got to play Eve Valkyrie, which is another space thing, but they've yeah. got all sorts of stuff coming out. Cool. But that was really cool because it had a, had a... It started when you were kind of in the... In the dock, right? Call it a dock. So you sit in your ship in the dock, and then all the stuff kind of raises up, and the door yeah. opens at the end, and you go. So, so out. like the start of the Star Tours ride at Disney. Yes, excellent, <laughs> perfect. That's all so I've ever wanted. <laughs> and it's weird how you kind of your brain obviously senses momentum. Yeah. So you kind of think I'm moving, but then you realise you're just sitting in a stall in and oh, conventional. That's so weird. Mm. Yeah, mm. I'd be interested to try some of it out. Some well, really cool stuff. Esper as well, which was the telekinesis mm. uh, trials, so that you apparently you had telekinetic powers. Cool. And so you'd use the um, headset yeah. by touching Touch a touchpad on the side yeah. to move stuff around. That's cool. Uh, Give it the old Professor X style. And the nice. assembly, which is going to be an adventure game with free movement in VR. So you'll be able to move around in with like a with a controller. With a controller yeah. yeah. Uh, awesome. In some weird underground secret research base doing super secret research things. Super secret, uh, super research. But that started by you'd been forcibly recruited. Right. So you were strapped into this gurney thing and just wheeled through the base. Yeah. And that's another one of those, oh, I'm moving. Yeah, well, I'm sitting like, still. I'm not moving. What is going on? My brain awesome. doesn't understand. Uh, yeah, no, it sounds really, really cool. Yeah, I was so excited. I'll be definitely up for a crack at that. So we got. In terms of when it's actually coming out, mm. the um, Samsung Gear VR is coming out this year, really? which is based off Oculus Tech. Okay. But it needs. Yeah, what's going on Samsung with Oculus? Phone. Where's that? Q1 2016. All oh, right. It's going to be about three hundred dollars. Mm. The Samsung Gear VR is going to be sixty quid. Fuck. Off. However, you do need a phone to go in it. So right. you need like a Samsung Edge, one of the new ones. I don't have one of those. Or a Sam, some kind of. There are some phones that work with it. Yeah. Uh, which will serve as like the lenses. Okay. Um, but it's going to be super clever. cheap, uh, as long as you've got the phone. To as go long with as you it. have a phone that works for it. I think yeah. Morpheus, PlayStation Morpheus, PlayStation oh, VR, VR is yeah. out um, early next year as well. Cool. And then the Vive, I don't know. I cool. don't think it's out only next year, but yeah. it's it's next year. Basically, next year is when next VR's year is gonna, VR happening. It's going to happen. And cool. It's going to blow people's minds. My, I am preemptively blown. <laughs> but yeah, that sounds like a uh, good little adventure. Yeah, played a bunch of indie games as well because oh yes, always always, always more, more indie games. games. Yeah, some really cool stuff there. Really good showing that probably trumped most of the big budget stuff. Mm. Um, in terms of number, but also in terms of interesting looking games yeah quality mm. obviously Devolver stuff is always good Devolver is eternally good and they the two big ones at the moment Enter the Gungeon and Itza yep the Crazy Shooter and the Norse Myth RPG yep which looks really cool um, Rising Star Games as well mm. from out of nowhere or creeping up slowly from out of nowhere because they used to do the odd weird thing like No More Heroes Oh, or, yeah, I remember that. Or I don't know what else they've done. They've suddenly become like a new Devolver. Right. They've got this really weird, interesting lineup of indies. So stuff like Once Upon Light, which is a puzzler, mm. puzzler where you have to make your way through these locations while not being in the light. It's okay. all sort of weird puzzles, kind of limbo-esque in a way. Yeah. Um, that's good. There's Loom... So they've, got, they've got a game they've got Lumini and Lumo right I'm trying to remember which is which Lumo I think is like an old school adventure game yeah like you know those weird uh, it's hard to describe without using hand gestures yeah. here but the the screen is at an angle right the, your view is at an angle and you kind of go through different rooms and explore this giant map and it's like a puzzler game. What, like the Isolinear? Yeah. The, the sort of like top-down old-school Fallout style stuff? No, not like that. Right. But more just it's been rotated round. So you move up, but in fact you're moving diagonally to the right. 
I can't remember what the, the tiny games were called, but they were kind of popular back in the like Amiga okay. and stuff. Fair enough. I think it was like Zool or Zoo something. Good. But they're like really weird dungeon crawlers. Yeah. Slash adventure games. And they've remade a new one. Cool. You made a new one. Made a new one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they've got a weird lineup of games. They've got Poncho as well, which is a, another platformer where you can shift between planes in the environment. So That's pretty you can cool. shift between like foreground, middle ground, and background to nice. progress. They've suddenly come out of nowhere with this. And just got a bunch of really interesting, really interesting stuff. Really interesting indie games, yeah. Nice. Which is cool. Yeah, always more. I mean, if we're going on adventure games, mm. if we move away from EGX, um, Divinity Original Sin 2, mm. bloody Chris Avalone of Fallout creating fame, yeah. has only gone on bloody join the dev team. I know. It's I just, pretty exciting. Oh my god, it's going to be so good. Mm. I, I read a thing, he's apparently doing at least one origin story. Nice. Because, yeah, the game is now made up of origin stories, isn't it? Yeah. So you can pick your class, and that... It's sort of like Dragon Age Origins. Yeah. However, apparently it's going to have even more impact. Because mm. Dragon Age Origins was, you had a two-hour-ish prologue, which set up your character depending on their race and status or whatever. Yeah. And then it kind of maybe came back into the game every now and then, but didn't really. Yeah. Um, but the way they're pitching it in Origins, it's like it's going to be fundamental to everything that yeah. happens in the game. It's, it's going to be so good. And Chris Avalon is writing at least one of them, and he's involved with the game. Yeah. I just, it's really it, cool. Everything about it is going to be brilliant. They've, mm. in, they've included new races. We've got like dwarves in there now, and mm. you've got uh, like undead and all sorts of cool shit and I just it's it's such a good game the mm. first one was so good and so I am super hyped for this one should be um, a blast I've been getting my little weekly updates from Kickstarter so <laughs> let me know how well it's going because they made like a bajillion money on it so much money yeah and uh, yeah when that comes out that's definitely definitely one for a playthrough yeah really good they're showing it off now at uh, TwitchCon, which is a oh, thing that's now which happened. Which has become a thing. I don't know how much longer for, because YouTube Gaming is taking all their custom. Because YouTube Gaming has generally universally been agreed to be better than Twitch. Oh, wow. And everyone's like, ooh, shit. The um, idea is pretty fun, to be honest. I've, I've watched our, uh, our good friend and cohort, Matt Webb, mm-hmm. play uh, various games on it. And apparently it's the way to go. It's the future. Because mm. we have a Twitch channel. I think we've used it like twice <laughs> ever. Nice. But we have one. Mm. I haven't seen... We also uh, have a Vine account that we've never used. The fuck is a Vine? <laughs> yeah, what the fuck is a Vine? Mm. Yeah. It's because we're not capable of being funny within six seconds. We need, need a little more setup. Yeah. But, yeah. So that's going to be pretty high. Yes, Divinity will be high. Um, now Bridgie Ridley Scott has had a word Ridley Scott has been talking to people about his Prometheus sequel uh, which he has revealed will be called Alien Paradise Lost so it's officially an alien film so after all that kerfuffle of oh no 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 an alien no it's, a sep- it's an alien film um, and he's also said that it's likely to in, uh, touch upon the origin story of Ripley. Right. So, first off, why? <laughs> why do we need that? We don't need an origin story for Ripley. No. That's stupid. Um, I, I presume that it will follow bloody Fassbender's head and Numi R- Rapace. 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 Yeah. Rapace. Rapace. <laughs> yeah repeat um, the pair of them on their adventures through space I imagine yeah I mean because it was them going who cares I know it's, fuck off Prometheus 2 Prometheus was hell. literally the shittest film whatever it wants to call it I just don't want this I don't care and the problem is he's holding up production on Neil Blomkamp's yeah, one the which is the one that be, people do want to see that's the one that he actually did Oh, really? Yeah, because because that's it. Like you, you and Ben and everyone has have always said to me, don't bother watching <laughs> Prometheus. It's a piece of shit. And I've done a, a segment on Prometheus for this week's episode from coming out on Wednesday. And I I thought, look, I'm not going to go in 
go in blind. I'm not going to mm. start, you know, shitting all over it if I haven't seen it. So I watched it, and it was so bad. <laughs> it was so bad. <laughs> Just with that cast, how could it have gone so wrong? Mm. But like Michael Fassbender was the only good bit of it. And yeah. Just, just what even? And bloody Guy Pierce, what was he doing in his little old man costume? That was just the most ridiculous <laughs> thing. Like, first off, why not get Lance Henriksen to do it? Since they've already established that Lance Henriksen plays Wayland, because mm. they did that in the. I mean, granted, he would have played a Wayland some generations prior because mm. he was Wayland in first Alien vs Predator or maybe second I made a timeline in my head of what order the films take place it's Prometheus in the timeline it's it's cool yeah right? it's it's uh, so if you put them all in order mm. it's Alien vs Predator mm. Alien vs Predator 2 ignore those they're bad yeah then Prometheus then it will be Paradise Lost Prometheus mm. 3 Prometheus 4 <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa! Yeah, no. So he's he's said that there's going to be four Prometheus movies before it ties up to Alien. Yeah, I know. So then Alien, then Alien Isolation, the game, technically, because yeah. that takes place just after Alien. Mm. Well, about seventeen years after. Then it's um, Aliens. Mm-hmm. Then it's going to be Aliens Two: The Retcon. Film 2.5. 2.5 with Neil Blomkamp. Yeah. But that's a separate timeline, so that goes off in its own direction. Mm. Then, following on from the original Aliens, is, what, 86, I think, that one? 84, maybe? It was mid-80s it came out. Mm. But from, from that one, uh, then it's Alien 3, then Alien Colonial Marines, the game. The game. Yeah, no one cares about that. No one cares about that. <laughs> uh, and then Resurrection. Mm-hmm. I think that's the end of the story. Yes. So, but I mean, we don't need four Prometheus films. <laughs> like, why would you even think that? Why would, who... It's, he's done a James Cameron Avatar bullshit. He's yeah. He's got like nine Avatars. The pair of them have made Alien films and gone completely fucking mental. <laughs> Just wait for David Fincher to announce he's doing like a six-part series about someone no one cares about. Seven. Yeah, it's like be a guys. Seven, seven films about seven. Yeah, one film per sin. Or what else could Fincher do? Social Network Two, the invention of Twitter. Yeah, that is some bullshit. Oh uh, yeah. But still, oh, it's gonna be, it's gonna be bad. I mean, Fastbender might be able to save it because mm. Fastbender is really good. Definitely in it, or are you just assuming it. I'm just point? assuming. Yeah. I am assuming. I do not know for sure who is in it. Although it would make sense for them to follow on. Yeah. I mean, with it being called Paradise Lost, one would assume, like with the whole obvious religious overtones of the first one, Mm. the idea was that they went to this planet, they found the people that created them that were effectively, you know, effectively God in that instance, because they are the creators of humanity. And she says, I want to know where they came from and where does God come from? But heaven, and at the start, he's like, oh, you know, heaven, paradise, whatever you want to call it, Mm. when bloody Night Owl is there for some (laughs) reason. Um, And, yeah, yeah. so one presumes with it being paradise, they'll go to where the engineers are from and some sort of bullshit will happen. I don't know what bullshit. (laughs) I don't know if I care what bullshit, but some (laughs) bullshit will happen. Um, Other sci-fi that... I'm caring less about than I should. Uh, Doctor Who season nine has kicked off. Um, I've I've been watching it. It's not very good. <laughs> um, the first the first episode was a two parter. Well, the first two episodes mm. was a two parter, uh, which was the Magician's Apprentice and the Witch's Familiar. Are the episode names. Now, a, a basic rundown is. But the Doctor assumes that it's like, oh, it's my last adventure and I'm going to die, so I've written a will. And then he goes off to an unknown location to find Davros, the leader of the Daleks. Mm -hmm. And it transpires that some point during the Doctor's travels, he went to a planet 
where there was a kid who was like in trouble and was going to get murdered by some stupid fucking hands that are coming out the floor because Doctor Who hasn't got any budget to do anything good. <laughs> um, and the Doctor was like, oh, I will help you because I help everyone. And the kid was like, help me, please. And he's like, I'll save you. What's your name, young man? Tell me the name of the man who's going to survive today. And the kid's like, my name's Davros. And the doctor's like, well, fucking see ya. And gets back in his TARDIS and leaves him. Um, and basically then, you know, cue however many hundreds of years Davros has been around. Mm. And he's now dying. And he's basically got the doctor to go to a recreated version of the Dalek homeworld so he can siphon off some of his regeneration energy so he can live longer. And it's just fucking nonsense. <laughs> and it is proper piss. And um, Clara's there being bad at being a character. And in all fairness, the only the only redeemable feature is Michelle Gomez is back as Missy, the mistress. Oh, right, yeah. Because she's the regenerated master. And she... I They need to just long off the whole thing and do a separate series about her adventures because... She's just so good. She is wasted on this show at the moment because, like, I'm, it's it's sad because Capaldi's really good, but they just put him in such shit storylines. <laughs> and yeah, so he goes on a romp and fucking there's Daleks and it's turns out the Dalek sewers are made up of old Dalek poo and, and <laughs> what the, the fuck? Dalek poo comes to life. And it's just so bad. Why do Daleks poo when they're like machines? Well, well, no, the Daleks, the idea is the Daleks are like little squid monsters inside tanks. Like the, the Daleks that you imagine is a tank. Right. And inside that opens up and there's like a weird little squid monster in it, uh-huh. which is a Dalek. Yeah. And because Daleks are genetically engineered to live forever, they don't like die as such, but they do you know, decay over time. Mm -hmm. And so eventually they decay to a point where they're just liquid, at which point they're basically Dalek poo and they flush the weird liquid Dalek into a sewer. (laughs) And then like Clara and Missy have to sneak in through the sewer and it's full of Dalek poo. And then they save the day by the doctor siphoning his regeneration energy into the Dalek poo, which means all the, Dalek Pooh is really angry that it just got flushed away and so it destroys the base. It's just... Oh, Kim Moffat is ruining this show! So, yeah, it's basically a massive... I'm just... I'm, shit fest? It's a shit fest. I'm really uh, quite upset. <laughs> quite literal shit fest. Yeah, I was, I was so <laughs> enraged when I watched the first episode. Because the second episode made the first one better in retrospect, but it was still a really bad episode. Mm. Second episode's not too bad, but still quite bad. But I don't even know. And then there's some bollocks happening next week, which has got like ghosts in Atlantis, and it's it's literally like they have a dartboard <laughs> with with just you know like spooky thing and location. And they've gone just ghosts in Atlantis. That'll do. Fuck it. Close Daleks enough. Dalek in sewers. Dalek in the sewer. <laughs> oh, it's just... Isn't um, someone coming back? It, it may be. Not... Um, one, of the, one of the old non-assistants, but she's a woman with curly hair. River Song? Okay. Oh, yeah, there was rumour that River was coming back. Yeah, she's like, apparently... Uh, uh, what's her face? Alex Kingston yeah. has been is involved in the series in some way. Mm. I don't know how I feel about that. I don't think she should be, personally. Mm. Because she... She died. She, well, she died, yeah. But <laughs> I, suppose, she, I, don't know. I suppose she... Because their timelines are going the opposite way. So I suppose she could technically meet the Doctor for the first time. Mm. But then they would have to end her story because... Because her, her timeline goes the wrong way. As soon as they meet, mm. and she's like, "Oh, hi, I'm River," and he's like, "Oh, we're married." Hello. Um, yeah, it's just Maisie Williams is in this series. Maisie well. Williams is turning up. There was there was rumours bound that she's playing a regenerated version of either the Doctor's daughter Jenny, mm-hmm. which maybe, or. Um, 
the Doctor's granddaughter, Susan, who was his first companion from back in 1963. Yeah. So that'd be kind of cool to bring her in because we haven't got enough Time Lords around, really. Um, and Maisie Williams is awesome. Mm-hmm. So, And obviously Clara's leaving, so everyone's like, ooh, who will take over? And it's like, maybe, maybe. No, it's going to be the other girl from last series. That fucking kid that he oh, took to the end of the God. or something. Oh, <laughs> when he was pretending to be a fucking janitor in the school. Oh my god, I just it's that that again, it was like robot in a school. <laughs> Mummy on a train. It's literally they just throw darts at a fucking board. Oh <sighs> angry. Um Jesus Christ. So other things um, they, they've released a deleted scene from the Age of Ultron because the DVD and Blu-ray has just been released mm-hmm. uh, and so we're getting some deleted scenes come out of it including a scene uh, with Thor and Eric Selvig mm-hmm. um, going to that that bit in Age of Ultron where they go to that random magic water yeah, pond which they just kind of glossed over yeah they went to the magic water pond and Thor gets in the water pond and then they cut back to the action. And he's like, wait, hold on. So um, in the deleted scene, they actually explain the point of that. <laughs> because the water in the pond is some sort of conduit of some weird oracle thing. Mm-hmm. And anyone who gets in it is basically granted foresight, but then it devours them. So Thor gets in there and because he's a badass. He... Oh, acts as fuck. yeah, he acts as conduit, but also he's like all lightning in and shit, so it can't take him over. Mm. And it talks all about the Infinity Stones and why. And because he has the the vision, doesn't you see? Yeah, yeah, you have the vision in the and stuff. yeah. But then the other bit they cut out was where he's sort of talking all about the Infinity Stones, and um, there's that maybe even a subtle hint towards Civil War because he says. Because he's talking about the um, the mind stone, and mm-hmm. Selvig is like, "Oh, is that the the stone in Loki's scepter?" And he's like, "You know, so so does that mean Loki is the bad guy here?" And the things like, "No, you need to look a lot closer to home for your enemies." So maybe it's talking about the fact that Tony's put the stone in Vision. Uh... So. Maybe, maybe, because mm. obviously they're going to be on the same side in Civil War. Yeah. Which is excitement, but Thor's not involved in that. He's fucking off to Ragnarok. To do his third film. To do his third film. He's like, sorry guys, contractually obliged. Can't help out with the one that people are going to actually want some watch. filler. Yeah, pretty Hopefully much. Hopefully it'll be better than the Dark World. Oh, I really hope so. Dark World was not very good. No. Because just... Just kind of happened. Did, yeah. There was literally no part of that that needed to happen. Mm. It just it did more to set up bloody Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. than anything else. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> but, yeah, so, but, you know, mm. I, I'm excited for Phase 3. Mm. It's not not too long until we get, um, get that all out of the way now. Mm. Well, I mean, technically, I think Ant-Man was the first of Phase 3, wasn't it? Mm. So... Yeah, and we're waiting for Civil War now, which will be the next next big one. Um, is a weird thing. You you told me recently, and recently as in like 20 minutes ago, that Rob Zombie and Mila Kunis are doing a horror comedy series together. Now, yeah. what even? Don't know. And why? It's called Trapped. That's all I know. That sounds good. Because um, I... Yeah. I mean, Mila Kunis, absolutely great. Mm-hmm. I'm always, always from Mila Kunis. Rob Zombie, I like Rob Zombie. Mm-hmm. I know he's had had a couple of shit films lately, but and and you know, albums are questionable. Depends on your taste. Mm-hmm. He went through a phase because he did because he did his old school like proper like techno metal stuff, and that was all good. And then he went through this phase where it was a bit kind of shit. <laughs> And then his his latest album. Well, I assume it's still his latest album. I haven't seen one since he did um, Black Rat something something, and that was a really good album. Hmm. It's basically he's gone back to like sort of that funky 
psychedelic kind of rock stuff. So it's like a White Zombie again, oh. but slightly less weird because okay. White Zombie was very weird. Um, but yeah, I, I like Rob Zombie because Devil's Rejects and House of a Thousand Corpses. Yeah. Top notch. <laughs> um, the Halloween remake was a bit... It was all right, but nothing really happened. Yeah. It was just a... It was a film. Mm-hmm. Um... He did. I, I liked Haunted World of El Super Beast, though. That was just so stupid. I love that. Film. I still need to watch that. It's pretty good. I mean, it's it's silly. And mm. I, I imagine when they're saying horror comedy, it's probably that. Mm. It's probably in that tone. Right. Because it was just a very silly, silly film. Lords of Salem was a bit of a letdown. That was the one that came out a couple of years ago, mm. and it was it was set in the seventies because he loves his seventies. It was set in the seventies, and it was about some radio DJs. And they were they were sent a record that they didn't know who it was, and it was some weird chanting music that made all the women in the town go weird, and mm-hmm. like sort of go a bit zombified. And it was like it start the first two thirds of that film are brilliant, mm. and then it just just off the edge of the cliff. Like what even? It just it's one of those things where. As a director, he's probably going, oh, we need to make it really weird now to show that the, the emotional turmoil she's going through. But it goes so weird that you just can't follow what's happening. <laughs> and it's like nice. there's just, you know, like a midget devil with a massive penis just run, And like all the chairs are made out of penises. And, <laughs> and there's just this... There's, wow. It's so weird. So weird. But long story short, it's about witches. Oh, Salem. Kels Salem. Kels, yeah. He loves it. So hopefully this will be good Rob Zombie and not Pat Rob Zombie. Yeah, it sounds like it will be a thing. A thing. It, it does sound. Be, it will be a thing that will exist. It will be a thing. And it sounds a bit weird. Yeah. Um, the only other thing on our, our to-do list for today. Um, we've got the Bond theme. Right, it's on the wall by Sam Smith. Or Earth Song by Sam, uh, Samuel, Michael Sa- Jackson. Samuel Jackson. <laughs> Samuel Jackson does the Earth Song. I'd listen to that. Um, yeah, no, we've got... It's, it's fucking boring. It's fucking boring shit. It's so just nothing. I think um, Mark Gatiss, or Gattis, whatever yeah. you say his name, he nailed it, because he's obviously quite a big Bond fan himself. Yeah. And he said... Um, the thing about good Bond songs is that, first and foremost, they're also good songs. Yes. The bad ones try and be pastiche. Yes. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. It's just like, oh, we've got the... Yeah. Thing like... intro, and then he sings a bit and sounds like... It sounds like if I tried to write a James Bond song yeah. in 20 minutes, which is how long he took to write it. <laughs> like He's like, oh, yeah, no, when they when they called me up to to say do you want to do the Bond song I was like yeah I'd love to do that and I, I was just inspired I wrote it in 20 minutes and it's like it really sounds like you wrote it in 20 minutes because mm. that's not not good you should take time to refine these things yeah I don't but, know what the current because Adele's one was slow and boring as shit as well mm, uh, although Skyfall sky <laughs> like, you know it's it's still it's definitively a Bond song like mm. I, I quite like Skyfall, but the song, but yeah, writing's on the wall. Just nothing happens. No, nah, it's all a bit dull. Like the whole, I find with a Bond song, you kind of want it to, to start off with that sort of slow and sultry kind of feel. Mm. Like yeah, you know, basically everyone wants it to be the next Goldfinger. So you start off with that, that sort of muted trumpets and that kind of jazzy mm. vibe. And it has to build to a oh big crescendo, mm. and it's like oh, but it just doesn't. Is one just sort of just meanders along mm. and then ends, and it's like oh, I see. Yeah, it's just it, it, that, pap. what else? This, the shit one was um, Jack White and Alicia Keys. That was also a shit one. Oh, oh sorry. Christ, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> the, the the problem with that <laughs> the problem with that song is it would have been good if it was just Jack White yeah and Alicia Keys turned up and ruined it because <laughs> Alicia Keys can do one mm. and 
And also, here's the thing, because I I got that single just because I really like the riff. Mm. And um, Alicia Keys didn't even play the fucking piano on it. Uh. Jack White <laughs> recorded the whole thing. She just sung a song. And then she word. just basically, he recorded the entire song, mm. sent it to her. She sang slightly off key <laughs> the entire song. And you'd think for a song that's going to be that big, mm. you would, you'd have an engineer that would go... Actually, love, can we get another take out of that? <laughs> or at least, like, tweak it in post. But mm. she was about a quarter tone out for the entire song. And because she was singing with Jack, mm. it just didn't work. Yeah. And, yeah, so... Uh, just shit house. But... I, I... Like, you would struggle for me to say anything bad about any park scene or out. Yeah. Um, and I also really liked Chris Cornell's song. Uh, you I know don't, my name. I don't even remember that song. That was, it was definitely more the the rocky side mm. compared to the jazzy stuff. Yeah. However, it had that um, the the build. Which yeah. It needs because the end it was the song was you know my name. Right. And at the end was just him like you know my name as Daniel Craig strolls yeah. into the camera and you're like yes nice this is badass yeah that's it has to elicit some emotion and it had kind of the James Bond suave atmosphere going on in the yeah. background as well before it really kicked off. And that's the thing, it's like it's it's just the atmosphere of the song. Mm. Whereas the Sam Smith one, it's just boring. Someone someone said it sounds like a Lana Del Rey song that they couldn't get Lana Del Rey to sing. <laughs> she was up for it at one point. Yeah. That's it. It sound they said it sounds like someone wrote a song for Lana Del Rey and it wasn't good enough, so she turned it down and they gave it to Sam Smith. Mm. That is entirely likely what happened. This is not very good. No. But 20 minutes. You can't write a song in 20 minutes. Fuck you. There are so many better people to do it as well. Yeah. Like, I didn't understand. Um, I didn't realise how it worked because people would submit ideas for Bond songs previously. Mm. So you've got people... Um, all of the examples have obviously fallen out of my head now. Yeah. But in the past, there were people that submitted songs for use in Bond song in yeah. Bond films. Yeah. And then they weren't picked, so they released them. They like released B-sides them. Or whatever. Yeah. There's there was oh, there was one that got quite famous a little while ago. And it was supposed to be a Bond theme, and it never got mm. to be a Bond theme. I can't remember which one it was. Yeah. Also, Radiohead were up for it at one point. Yeah, that would have been interesting. They've done. They did a cover of. Um, Nobody does it better. Really? <laughs> At one point, which is pretty good. Um, but I imagine their Bond song would be kind of kind of amazing. Mm. I'd yeah. love to hear that. Um, Ellie Goulding was rumoured for a while. Yeah. But that didn't happen. She's got a new single out. It's fucking awful. <laughs> Excellent. It's so bad, and somehow it's number one because... Because, because everything is garbage. The general public... I was gonna say, I'm just, I'm just looking. At, I've, I've found a list here of um, unused Bond themes. Now, back in the day, it looks like the the song was written, and then different artists performed it, and they chose their favourite. Right. Yeah. Um, bloody, um, Thunderball was Johnny Cash. Huh. Johnny Cash did a version of Thunderball, as you do. Um, yeah, there's um Oh, apparently um the Jack White one was gonna be Amy Winehouse. Oh. <laughs> and it says uh she was recording a demo for it, but it never surfaced and it surely would have been better than the vocal mismatching of Alicia Keys and Jack White. Hmm. That is true. But yeah, no, I forget what it was. There was there was a song recently that was gonna be like the song for like Skyfall or whatever mm. and it didn't get chosen so it just got released and everyone was like it sounds like this should be a Bond song and it's like actually what <laughs> one but, of the uh, tracks on Raw Blood's album mm. I think it's Blood Hands or something they yeah. said that was our attempt to write a Bond song really yeah they didn't submit it or anything but it was more like they wanted to capture the in all fairness Bond song I love that was, song yeah so I always have in my head one day I would like to make like when when we're big famous movie makers, yeah, um, make a bloody shadow uh, shadow run, you know, with the sci-fi oh, fantasy noir yes. stuff. Yeah, 
that to me whenever i hear that song i just have like the opening credits of a shadow run movie in my head <laughs> one day it'll happen it'll be awesome like a human detective who doesn't trust meta humans mm. he's paired up with like a you know an elven partner and they have to investigate the murder of an orc <laughs> it's reminding me I've been watching Rick and Morty yes it reminds me of baby legs and normal legs <laughs> yes <laughs> yes it's the weirdest episode oh my god in the, oh, the fucking serial Lucky Charms ad <laughs> yeah and the kids come along and open up his stomach and oh man I should, I'm like, ants in my eyes Johnson <laughs> <laughs> I hope my prices aren't too low I can't see there's ants this in my, my eyes there's a microwave it's on uh, two hundred dollars, and he's pointing at like a washing machine. Yeah, uh, they, they did a in season two. The most recent episode uh, was a sequel to that episode, <laughs> so it was mainly nice. just improvised adverts. It was like the <laughs> all of them sitting in a hospital waiting room watching intergalactic TV. Mm, the Brilliant. two brothers, yes, versus two brothers, cats, and there's old women now. Yeah, with, so good. with guns. Two two brothers. <laughs> it's just called two, two brothers. Two brothers. <laughs> fucking what it is it? Ball fondless. Yeah. Just the A team rip off. It has a very improvisational tone. <laughs> Good. Uh, that'll probably yeah. do, to be yeah. honest, because we're going to get some pizza and go and watch the NFL. So, so hungry. Go Bucks. Um, so, yeah, thanks very much for listening. And we'll be back. Oh, yeah, there'll be an episode on Wednesday this time. There wasn't last week because the computer was broken. Computer's still broken, but oh, it's all right. I'll work on that later. So, uh, yeah, so thanks so much for listening, and we'll catch you next time. Bye. Bye.